Welcome to On the Sidelines. I'm John Locke with Brad McKinnon and Dollar Store Ted DiBiase. What do we got going on over here? That's right. I'm all decked out, ready to celebrate that championship sweep. Got the glasses, the coat, the basketball shorts, ready to roll. That's right. I like how you celebrate. No lint on this jacket, baby. <laughs> no, no, no. You hit the dry cleaners before you came here. <laughs> well, on the back of the uh, Boston Herald, there's actually a nice picture of Jalen Brown saying how sweep it is, and that's where we start. Leading off of the Boston Celtics, sweeping their way to the NBA Finals, defeating the Indiana Pacers, 105-102 in Game 4 of the Eastern Conference Finals. Jalen Brown winning the Conference Finals MVP. He had 29 points on 11 of 22 shooting. But overall, the Boston Celtics are just the mean green basketball machine here, entering the Finals 12-2, and yeah. um, one of the best final runs so far, I think, in basketball history. We'll get to some of the discussion, maybe why, later on. But just basketball-wise, this team's on a roll. Oh, they are. And, I mean, this series was pretty entertaining. A lot of comebacks, and we proved we can do it, you know. it was, They weren't all the best-looking games, but we did pull them out. So that's all that matters when it says 4 nothing, and we're going to the, the finals, and the Pacers are going home. So ESPN has a win probability tracker. If you look at game one, the Pacers had a 71.7% chance of winning with 47 seconds left in the fourth. Obviously, Jalen Brown capitalizing on a Pascal Siakam turnover, hit that ridiculous three-pointer at the end of regulation to help get the Celtics the first win of the series. In game three, they had the Pacers had a 73.9% chance of winning with a minute 12 left in the fourth. And same thing in game four. With a minute 12 left to go in the fourth, the Pacers had a 54.3% chance of winning. Dom, I think we've said this all postseason, but the Celtics teams of the past couple years, I don't think they would have won these games. Not at all. They wouldn't have. This team, this team is mature. They're on a mission. I don't care what the national media says about uh, who, who they've been facing in these other teams being injured. They got the job done. And Jalen Brown, as I mentioned, named the uh, Conference Finals MVP, averaging 29.8 points per game in the series, five rebounds, three assists. I mean, this thing felt like kind of the Jalen Brown roller coaster, especially in game four. You heard, if you heard the press conference, he said um, in the first half he played like trash. And in the second half, I have no idea what came over him. But, I mean, the guy just went off and took over defensively, offensively. He was a spark plug for the Boston Celtics in yep. Game 4. Oh, he's hungry. He is hungry. I think it came down to he realized he could contribute more, and he just did with his God-given talent, and he threw it right all on the basketball right. court. No, it was great to see him step up big because, like we said, I mean, on the radio we were talking who we think the leader is right now, and I definitely want to still say that that's Jalen Brown. Just yep. cause Absolutely. He's, he's got the mentality. He's, he's bringing it physically, everything, like you said, he – the defense in that la uh, the second half of that game, it's ridiculous, fam. You don't see it all the time, but it was great to see him show up this whole series because he did show up the whole series. If you know? I may add one more thing. Now, imagine yeah. if White was in his groove and Tatum was being Tatum. Oh, it yeah. would have been a total blowout. I mean, it really would have. Look at Drew Holiday. He was in his groove, man. He was getting some good steals. Yeah. He was exactly. doing well, man. Yep. He had, what, 28 points, I think, in... Um Game, game two or one. It was, I think, yeah, one of the Yeah, don't, didn't, he, didn't he do the same thing in uh, game three? I thought he put on a little he, bit of a put, show. He put on a show. I don't know if it was 28 again. But it was up there, though. Uh, it was. It, yeah, I mean, in game three, he was the reason the Celtics won. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that ridiculous Absolutely. steal. All those steals. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. From Nemhard and then um, getting fouled by Pascal Siakam. That was almost a take foul. Probably should have been a take foul. Um, but... That shows the championship pedigree. We talked about this on TV and on the radio as well. Yep. That Drew Holiday, with that championship mentality, has really pushed Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and to have that championship mindset that you need to have in a situation like this. Because last year, even the year before that, you see the Celtics with a 3-0 series lead. They think, okay, yeah, we can screw around for a couple right. of games, whatever, kick back, relax. But... Now, you look at this as, if we win tonight in Game 4, Kristaps Porzingis gets another 10 days off, 
Al Horford at 38 years old, gets he that. gets 10 days off mm -hmm. and, you know, he can recoup. And if Christoph Porzingis can't go for whatever reason in the finals, then you have Al Horford being able to play off of 10 days rest. And the finals, I think every game is, two I think every apart? two days, yeah, just about. Yeah, I think it's every apart, two days. You know, two days of travel in the finals. That sounds right. Uh, so I mentioned Jalen Brown. He uh, had quite the situation with Stephen A. Smith. Uh, I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but uh, Stephen A. on first take said that he heard from an NBA source that uh, Jalen Brown, you know, wasn't the most liked player and that he wasn't as marketable because certain players didn't like Jalen Brown. And um, Brown went on Twitter or another social media site, I forget what it was, but he basically asked Stephen A. to state his sources. Now, I have my thoughts on how this might have went down, but Jalen Brown, he didn't make the All-NBA all team, any of the three teams. He didn't make the All-Defense team. You know, he has this going on. Jalen Brown, this postseason, has come out trying to prove something to all the naysayers, all the voters, and the rest of the players in the Absolutely. NBA. No, Absolutely. 100%. Especially after that big contract he just signed, he's trying to show, hey, look, you didn't make a mistake. You dra when you drafted me, you didn't make a mistake, and when you paid me, you're not making a mistake, you know? I get a feeling the guys that, is, that the naysayers that is giving this clown this information, that I guess I bet you they're ex-Celtics. I'm just saying. An ex-Celtic. Who could that be uh, playing in oh, Boston yeah. June 6th? Hasn't won a game since he did a certain thing to our logo. Yeah, I'm hmm, sure you right? do. Right? Uh, I wonder who we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might talk about him later on. Um, there was a lot of discussion whether or not Jalen Brown should have been the MVP of the conference finals. And realistically, there were options. You had Jason Tatum, who really came out of nowhere with, I mean, it feels weird to say, but a quiet 26 points in game right. four. Right. Uh, 36 in game three, but you had Tatum, Brown. I think you could even make a case for Holiday oh, being conference finals MVP. 100%. Yeah. Really, there was no wrong answer here. I'll be honest here. Game three was the first one I didn't get to watch at all. And because I'm, I'm driving around with my friends, we're going far away on a trip real quick for a night. We went down to the Cape, best way to put it. <laughs> and uh, it's late at night when we went down there. Friends said, hey, come down. So we did. My friend keeps looking at me. He goes, why are you updating it so much? They're down, I think it was five with less than a minute left or a minute and 40 seconds left, something like that. And I kept updating it and updating it and all the commercial breaks. And I'm like, what's going on? So I give it a few minutes. I update it. I go, bud, there's 1.1 seconds left or 1.2, whatever it was. And we're up a point. Right. You know, and I go, that's why I kept updating that's it, all awesome. right? Because I, anything is possible when you have a team as stacked and mature, finally, as we are right now. I'm so addicted to, with the ESPN app. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be watching the game with my, bo with my friends, mm -hmm. and I'll just watch the game, and I get the results quicker than they do because you have that 20-second delay. Yeah, for delay. some reason when They'll I was on me, ESPN. Shut the phone. Will you shut the phone up? We're trying to watch the game. It wouldn't <laughs> let me log in through my Xfinity, so I'm like, oh, looks like I'm refreshing the whole time. So right. that was my issue there. But I still I can't believe we won game three. And that, that, a lot of that is almost completely on Drew Holiday for that last possession and the steal and all that. So after game four, when they presented the Larry Bird conference finals mvp trophy to jalen brown perfect name they actually yeah the actually the first name. year that the trophy was named after larry bird it was jason tatum that won the award mm -hmm. yep. so two out of the three years cedric maxwell presented the award this time to jalen brown but nba.com released the um votes of all nine personalities from the media who voted on the award five for jalen brown Four for, for Jason Tatum. Tatum. Oh, I saw that. That kind of shows you kind of that split decision that a lot of people have had in the past. And, I mean, this is a good problem to have in the NBA. If you have two, you know, A-plus talents like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, if we're having this conversation, this is the biggest thing, you know, oh, who's the top star, Tatum or Brown? That's an awesome problem to have. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. It is. And it doesn't matter who the answer is as long as they're doing what they're doing. I mean, all these Eastern Conference finals, we'd like to say we went to the finals more and won one, but I do believe this is our year. I mean, I'll put the Bruins Celtics beef aside. Like I said, before we ta started talking about it, I s last year was the Bruins year, 100%. This year is the Celtics year to do it. The and I really hope that they do finish off whatever team comes into town, and I do, I think it's going to be Kyrie. 
Oh, definitely. 3-0. I well, mean, yeah. we have the uh, it's series. It's possible, but you never know. You never know. Uh, 155-0 now, teams with a 3-0 record. Well, so, they, I mean, Minnesota could still win a couple. I mean, they probably will. The games were close over there, just like yeah. here. They were very close, you know, just a few plays yep. are what made us win this series and what could have the Mavs win that series, too. So one thing I think that does bear watching is Jason Tatum's field goal attempts. Uh, 36 points in Game 1, 23-2, and two, uh, 36 in Game 3, and 26 in Game 4. Very impressive numbers. But you look at how many shots it took for him to get to that point. Uh, game 1, he was 12-26 of 26 from the field. Pretty good. Uh, game 2, 9-20 of 20 from the field. Game 3, he was 12-23. of 23. In Game 4, he was 11-26. of 26. Especially those first two games, he was trying to force stuff to happen. And I don't think you can do that with this Dallas Mavericks team coming in here. Um, so, I mean, if you're the Celtics and Jason Tatum, I think you have to kind of watch that shot profile. If you don't see anything when you're in the five-out offense, don't go ISO. Mm -hmm. Try and get the ball inside. Try and switch up some of those matchups. And get and try it to Horford and... like you did in game three. Exactly. You know, hang that pitcher in the Louvre. That was crazy. <laughs> the that only awesome. devil's advocate I have to that is with, Tate, with the way Brown plays the game. He has to find his groove. If he doesn't find his groove early, he has to take those shots. Mm -hmm. He has to get the rhythm. That's what he's made. That's his M.O. Uh, Jalen Brown said this on um, this year being a different finals experience. Obviously, they made the uh, finals a couple years ago against the Warriors, lost in six at the TD Garden. Uh, he said, we feel like we're a different team than we were last year and the year before that. I know everybody wants to continue to kind of pigeonhole us to what was happening in the past, but we've had a different team every single year, yeah. different coaches. We've had three different coaches in the last five years, and still people want to make it seem like it's the same, it's the same, it's the same. Time has gone by, experience has been gained, and I think we are ready to put our best foot forward. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Comments like this lead me to believe Jalen Brown is the leader of the Celtics. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. he's the one going out there yeah. talking to media and all that. I mean, he doesn't care what he says either. He's shown we're ready to win and we'll do anything to win, you know, especially when you're cussing at the media and all that. You just show how much you really want it, you know. You're not holding back at all, and that's what they need to do on the court, especially him because, I mean, was it game – it was three or four, I believe it was game four. We were just talking about JT. He went 0 for 9. Mm -hmm. towards the end of it you know we can't be having that we need to put it all on the line and like we just said it's a team effort and we got we need four more wins four more wins to finally bring it home with the boys who do deserve it because how many years has it been since we've been going you know uh, six 16. six no i'm saying oh, the eastern conference group. finals with those yeah. two alone six years out of eight or six out of seven something i think it's like six that, out yeah. of eight or five out of eight, something, it's it's immaculate, the number, whatever it is. It's almost like the Patriots, why it's going to the AFC Championship, yeah. you know? Celtics don't put up conference banners, they put up World oh, yeah. Championship No, and that's banners. why we need to get one this yeah. year. You know, they're overdue. They are. Um, Christoph Porzingis was rumored to return for Game 4, obviously, with a 3-0 series lead. I don't think you do that, um, and they didn't. But what should we expect from Christoph Porzingis when we get to Game 1 of the NBA Finals, when he takes the floor, I think he'll be good to go. He'll be, he'll have a little rust on him, but you're pra there, there's no way they're not practicing hard this whole next week. Yeah, they're laying Al Horford go hang out. You're an older guy. He gets less time. You get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. They're still train practicing hard. You know, and poor Zingas. I'm glad he didn't play in Game Four. I am. I mean, if you were gonna put him in, I would have threw him in Game Six at worst. You know, yeah. just so he does get a little bit of time and hopefully you close out the series, but. Thankfully, we did close out the series, and as you said earlier, they got 10 days now to rest up, which is very good for him because I like him, but I've said it before on the show, he is kind of made out of glass. Those ankles always have some sort of an issue. Well, he'll have a brace on that. He'll have a brace on that ankle. Oh, I just, oh yeah. But as far as using him, I think they need to build his confidence, work him down low, make sure he can hit the 12-footers, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Then we all know he can hit the three-pointer when, you know, when he's in that groove. Get his confidence, get him in the groove. Like you said, they were obviously practicing in the game situations. Yeah. You know, I don't know, you know, one, who, I don't know who's the bad guy during practice. Probably was Brzingis trying to be uh, Sakem. Is that his name, the kid from Indiana? Probably trying to fit. Oh, Siakam, yeah. Siakam, I'm yeah. sorry. You know, and now it's going to be the other way around. Someone's going to play 
the other bad guy and fill in that shoes, and I think you need to work. He needs to get his time down low, get his confidence up, get in the game. See how he is the first 10 minutes. If he's good, stay, big guy. Yeah. Stay, do your match, do what you do best. Put the basketball in the cylinder. Realistically, Kristaps Porzingis just has to last seven more games yeah. in the season. We're not asking him to play another 25, 30 games. Just seven more games. And if he plays how he's played this year, the Boston Celtics are going to be 18-time NBA champions. Looking at the Dallas Mavericks, and we'll preview it in a little bit, you have the likes of a Daniel Gafford, Derek Lively, even a Maxi Cleaver, who's rumored to be coming back for the finals potentially. Those are three really big players who are going to be big in the post, big on the boards. So if you can have Al Horford and Kristaps Porzingis in there playing the 4-5, whichever spot they want, that's going to be huge, especially against a Dallas Mavericks team that um, Luka, Kyrie, and then JT and JB, those four are all going to basically cancel, cancel each other out. Yep. So it's going to come down to, you know, who steps up? Is it P.J. Washington? Is it Derek White? Um, is it a Derek Jones Jr.? Or Drew could Holiday. it be a Drew Holiday? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of interesting factors going into this, but um, – the Boston Celtics, as I mentioned, 12-2 and two in this postseason. One of the best records for a postseason run so far. But a lot of people aren't giving the Celtics the respect I think they deserve. And, I mean, this could be something the Celtics could kind of use as emotional reinforcement and a driving force going into the finals. All these people saying that the Celtics didn't really go through anyone. The Celtics don't really deserve to be here because they didn't face any teams with a true superstar. You know, I get re I'm get. i really getting sick of that. I'm really getting sick of that. <laughs> I'm like biting my tongue on what colorful metaphor I want to add to the national press. But I'm happy to be here to talk about the Celtics. But at the same time, you national media people that have this vendetta against Boston, the Boston Celtics and looking for number 17 and you're an L.A. fan or whatever, just shut your stupid mouth and let the boys play. The Celtics, whatever reason, their schedule fell like this, and they got the job done. Just shut your mouth, and when it's all over, you'll be crying anyway. Well, you'll be crying anyway once it's all over after and we win the world championship again. And the only thing stopping the Boston Celtics are the Boston Celtics. Oh, yeah. 100%. That's the only thing that's stopping them. And it's, I'm just get sick of hearing that national media And, and it's like, hey, look at the regular season. Who came in first in the all of NBA? who was seven games ahead of the whole West. Okay, Cavalier didn't have a, a star. How did they get make it to the second round? Same with right. the Pacers. I know the Knicks w got very beat up and kind of lost focus and lost game seven, but yeah, it was an easy path, but we, we earned the easy path. We but were the really best. We were, we were number one. I know it wasn't that you know what easy, I mean? but. Exactly. They, just like hockey, you beat who's ever in front of you. Uh -huh. or, or football, you be, you know, come with the great scheme, you, you beat who's in front of you. Uh -huh. The stupid national media, all they want to do is, like, run them into the ground because so it ain't our fault the knucklehead got hurt in, at the garden. You upset his hamstring. I don't remember his name. I don't care to know his name. Maybe Tyrese Halliburton, one of the thank top you. wing players, but whatever. It was until he hurt himself, <laughs> and now now he's out. Oh, it's, oh well, now we got an easy road because now he's out. No, the Celtics were down. They came back and they won these games. Well, a, a lot of them were. A lot, exactly. Back, but as James Franco said in, I forget what movie, they hate us because they ain't us. Exactly. You know, exactly. look at the, all the right. years. I mean, there was probably between, from 2004 to now, there was probably three years where we didn't at least make it to the AFC Championship, the Eastern Conference Finals, and hockey or uh, baseball, and then yeah. the pennant over there and the Red Sox. We've been getting this close for a while now. Right. I know we haven't won them all, but we've got We're a always lot competing. farther. Always competing. always competing. Yep. 100%. So let's think about history here for a second. Yep. Last year against the Heat in Game 7 at the Garden, when the Heat won the Eastern Conference, that was a farce because Jason Tatum rolled his ankle. Uh, okay, we go to 2017, that. I think it was. Um, Kyrie Irving, I brought this up last week. You know, he had the issue with his nose or whatever. Um, Gordon but he Hayward, went to the movie premiere he, instead of being there on the bench next to his team. Right, Gordon Hayward had the broken oh. leg, obviously. So... LeBron going to the finals, that was flawed too. Uh -huh. um, the year before that, Isaiah Thomas injured his hip and 
wasn't the player he was going to be. Um, so that was a farce. He still showed up. Um, too, the Lakers guy. in 2010, when they won the championship, that was the a load of garbage season. because oh, yeah. Kendrick Perkins mm-hmm. blew out his knee. Um, the Boston Celtics play the same amount of teams, the same amount of times in the regular season. The fact that they won 64 games isn't their fault. These people on Boston Sports Radio who continue to say, it's a farce, it's a sham, why they're even in the finals. They don't belong here. They haven't had a good road. Thank they're you. not clutch. They're just lucky. First of all, they're the Celtics. They're supposed to be lucky. And second of all, if, this, if they went seven games with this roster, what would be said? Well, this team's not ready for the clutch. This team's just a bunch of choke artists. Boston Sports Radio, I know they need their listeners for the next 10 days because all they have is the Red Sox. They need to pick one. Do they want to be a fan of this team that wants to support Jason Brown or Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, or do they want to go ahead and trash this team? Mm-hmm. If you want to trash this team, trash them, fine. But this team deserves to be here. They've been the best team all the way through now till June. Yep. They just had to win four more games in 10 years when we get past you know, the on the sidelines 10 year reunion or 10 year anniversary, we're going to talk about the Celtics championship, not the fact that they went 12 and 2 against teams that didn't have Jimmy Butler, Tyrese Halliburton, and Donovan Mitchell. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we will talk about Bill Walton, who we lost at the age of 71 earlier this week. Earlier this week, Basketball Hall of Famer Bill Walton lost his battle with cancer, passing away at the age of 71. Bill Walton won two NBA championships, one with the Portland Trailblazers and a member of the 1986 Boston Celtics, when he also won the Sixth Man of the Year award. A lot of people uh, that don't know that Bill Walton was such a great basketball player know that he was just a great basketball announcer. Um, If you watch any Pac-12 highlights on YouTube, I mean, he was a staple of Pac-12 basketball coverage for the last 10, 15 years. I mean, he ate a candle. He had Snoop Dogg walk up behind him. I mean, this man was kind of just a sight to behold, and a lot of people forget that he was such a talented basketball player. Yeah, I had the pleasure of watching Bill Walton win 1986. And I get it. I was two years old. Two I don't know. Years you old, had the right? pleasure. I so, know. And, <laughs> I wasn't even born. And we talk about Przingis and we talk about Al Horford. He was that sixth man that year, just like Przingis and Al Horford. Uh, you know, I think of them the same way. Paris and um, and you know, and it's just it's just a tragedy. I mean, he was so entertaining, and like you said, watching Pac-12 basketball, he had brought a different color to the to the to basketball and at the college level and it's a tragedy I mean I can just I feel bad for his family and uh, it's gonna be surely missed so I don't know much about him but I did look him up uh, when I was seeing it all over Facebook and uh, as you said he was a great basketball player but one thing that I do love that I heard about him is that he brought the energy whenever he went to anywhere he always brought the energy with him and you hate to hear about anyone dying of cancer and when it's a Celtic legend who did bring a trophy back yep. home it hits a little harder too yeah, again I, I think of Przingis and I think of Paris and him and Horford and Przingis I think of that same matchup you know and that's why I think we're going to win the world championship so I think um, losses like this obviously it's sad and tragic and I thought the same thing with Tommy Heinsohn. Um, you know when he passed People brought up stories about him on the court and off the court, and the same thing can be said for Bill Walton. Um, you know, I just thought of him as a basketball player, as an announcer, and really someone who loved to have fun while on the call. Uh, but hearing everything he did for people off the floor was um, great to hear. And yeah. you know, as the tributes continue to pour in from people he worked with on ESPN and even people he was with on the floor, at, even at UCLA where he was one of the top two basketball players along with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Um, so as you're on social media, just kind of take in those stories that you hear as uh, Bill Walton is definitely a basketball personality that will be sorely missed. I uh, yeah. want to move ahead now to the uh, NBA Finals as we continue previewing 
the Boston Celtics and what will probably be the Dallas Mavericks. We're recording this today of game four, uh, but it's going to be Dallas and Boston. We know someone's going to be coming to the garden who a lot of people can't wait to uh, heckle. What are your thoughts on Kyrie coming back to the garden? The number one thing I want to see is just the boys defend Causeway. We can lose a game or two out there, but when Kyrie Irving comes to Boston, you keep that streak going. He's 0-12 ever since Brooklyn, uh, when he went to Brooklyn there. And hopefully we can keep that uh, losing streak going for him because we do have home field advantage. So if we just defend Causeway from that dude that I want to say a lot of bad things about, like Jack A, you know, nothing serious. <laughs> but uh, He's taking def- the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> You really, you yeah, really no, are taking the words right out of my mouth. He's not, he's not liked in Boston by anyone. I mean, it's one thing you're saying, oh, I'm staying in Boston for life, holding your jersey, having your speech before the game. It, and like I said another past episode, that's business. That's a business aspect. It is. That might even been on the radio, so it might not have been on an episode. But you but figure you use common sense. You're about to sign the contract. Why else would you brag? Unless yeah. It's just one thing, one small glitch in your contract. To, when you say that you're telling me you're going to sign that contract, it's a done deal. We have another good point guard for so many more years. But whatever got his panties in a tiver, I don't know what it was, but the guy's a clown. He's just a clown. You just don't stomp, stomp on long, lucky like he did. Right. So, if this were the regular season, January, March, even April, I could understand the chance and the boos. But there's something so much bigger for the Boston Celtics and this crowd. If you focus on Kyrie Irving saying, you know, F Kyrie and all that, you're feeding into him. You're yeah. going to drive him to go ahead and score. 40 points on the TD Garden floor. For two weeks, Kyrie Irving just has to be a superstar that people don't like. He has to be on the level of LeBron James or a Kobe Bryant when he was at the Garden in the NBA Finals. Treat Kyrie like a regular superstar threat, and the Celtics will win, and you'll have the ultimate plus one on Kyrie Irving, and you'll get revenge for stomping on Lucky and everything he's done to the Celtics in the past. But for two weeks, it has to be focus on banner 18 and not focus on number 11. Can I issue a hypothetical? So why couldn't the Celtics use this for the guys that played with them that know he's a clown? Use this they're as all mo- friends. Well, they're all friends. But at the same time, he also started that national crap that got back to the national media about, it, you know, about Jalen Brown and all this other crap. You know it was oh. him. My yeah, point is... Man. Even if they're friends, now they're competitors. Wouldn't that motivate you even more to try harder to shove it in his face? You know what? I think we can talk about this on the radio. Okay. And you can listen (laughs) every Friday morning at 11 a.m. on WVBF 1530 a.m. 99.7 FM. And you can call in from 11 to 12. For Brad McKinnon, Dominic Damiano, I'm John Luck. We'll see you next week. So can I say jackass? (laughs) 